Well, hello there, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Wolfgore here, and we are jumping into episode 9, I think, already. Um, I say already, we've been on this Let's Play a while. So let's get into it. We just finished up a date with Brian, the magnificent, the amazingly bearded man. And uh, we just got back from the bar with him, and we're talking to Amanda. Once Brian takes over babysitting duties, Amanda walks home with me. She is immediately she immediately plops down on the couch and flips on the TV. So how was your hang with Brian? He wasn't too spicy about his crushing defeat, was he? Nah, he was pretty gracious about it. Like, frustratingly gracious. Yeah, how dare that guy have some decency. Come on, Dad, he seems like a neat dude. I think so. I don't know. The guy loves a good competition. But then again, apparently so do I. What did you and Daisy? What did you and Daisy end up doing? Oh, we hunted for treasure for a bit, but Daisy was really adamant about not digging without a permit, so we just watched some documentary about theoretical physics. I put her to bed and then sat around eating Brian's hmm. food. Don't tell him I said that. That's standard babysitting protocol, I believe. I really like hanging out with Daisy. She's super mature for her age. Yeah, Brian says she has a hard time relating to other kids. She kind of reminds me of you at her age. Although she doesn't bite people as much as you do. Ah. That's probably good. I can't believe I'm finally the cool older kid. Feels good, man. Uh, you gonna hang out with Brian again? That's the thing. He wants to go fishing with ah. me. Oh, I told him I was an amazing fisherman. Mm -hmm. You hate fishing. I know. I kind of panicked. Oh. I'm sure it'll be fine. All you have to do is wake up at the crack of dawn and sit silently in a boat on a lake for hours on end with no promise of a tangible reward. Your only companion being the fear and doubt you harbor deep within your heart. <laughs> Sounds like a great time. Fishing's fun. You'll remind yourself as the world darkens around you and you wonder if it's really you staring back at yourself in the lake's reflection or simply just the abyss. Yeah, laugh it up, Amanda. You're coming with us. Huh. It is my constitutional right to outright refuse this order. Daisy's coming too. Well, hmm. I bet I could convince Brian to bring his dog. <laughs> Fine, sold, I'm in. All right, I'm bushed. Gonna call it a night. Don't stay up too late, okay? You got it, pops. All right, so. Date with Brian complete. Fantastic. Look at all of those points. You sure and an know S how to make rating. Dad blush. Don't mind if I do. Welcome. You've got dad. So, who, what do we want to do next? Who do we want to go on a date with next? Uh, that's a good question. I kind of liked Matt, you know? But at the same time, I did get a request in the comments to try out at least one of these four guys that I'm not super interested in. So maybe we should just give that a go. I mean, we did technically sleep with Robert, but he's kind of an asshole. And I don't... I don't know. Uh, Joseph's kind of up his own ass and he's married, so I don't know. Maybe Damien or Hugo? I kind of want to check out the goth guy, you know? I'm, I'm a little curious. A little cu maybe he's cool. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm uh, being a little hasty with my judgments. So, Damien. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. Sure. Navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey, dude. You seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and the computer finally dings! Whoa! <laughs> I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in a gentlemanly manner, as I would have liked. He makes a good point, and I will accept that. Oh, whoa, there's more. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden, should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Bloodmarch. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Hey, Amanda. Can you help me with something? Aww. Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping you back 
Oh, oh, I'm not popping your back, pimples. Ooh, oh. No, no, can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just, I don't understand neat speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying LOL and LMAO or whatever and decided that what they needed to do was bring back the 1800s. So what do I do? Mm. Where's your pen and quill? <laughs> Did you forget to unpack your pen and quill, Dad? How will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our yeah. land. Or a dowry. Yeah. Or... So, you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're re reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Eh? Like the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Great. So what do I do to Damien? Or what do I say to Damien? I know what to do to him. I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards. Yeah! Oh. Amanda hits send and smiles at me. <laughs> Simple. I like it. Well, I suppose that's that. I make the short- whoa, look at that house. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor. A state? Gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and a howl, a hollow sound echoes through the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of whom I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Hmm. Oh, look at the dog. Look at the funny dog. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Of course it does. He Hello? Silence. And an oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Wolf, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. Didn't even know that was a thing. What's up? What's with the door slamming shut? <laughs> oh, sorry, there was a draft. He's a vampire. And the door creaking open when I knocked? Oh. I accidentally left the door unlocked. Sure. You vampire. And the creepy oil paintings. I like oil paintings. Right. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting... He has two sitting rooms? My god. And the parlor again for some reason. How delightful! This is one of the older homes on the block. Yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture it might suggest. <laughs> Through extensive renovations, I've been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of a modern dwelling. I like it. We walk past a door covered in a... Covered in bumper stickers. That must be his son. Caution tape and black parade posters. Hey, just like me in high school. Did they listen to my chem do they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. Hmm. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. Hmm. And then this is the library. Okay, that's pretty cool. I oh okay. Sunlight streams in from floor-to-ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period-appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. He should be. This is awesome. Um... Pick up a book. You know, Wolf, in the Victorian era, that was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage use into a life of crime and would... Cause too much of a distraction 
from work and school. Man, this game really tests my vocabulary. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Naruto? Naruto? Naruto struggled against the chains that... <laughs> It's actually Naruto! Naruto struggles against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. Oh, that's a rare book from my private collection. Uh, <laughs> out the window. I walk to the window and am greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. What a badass. Damn. He sees me and waves happily doing push-ups with one hand. <laughs> of course he is. Damn. Did you know that Victorians spend at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? Oh. No. Vic Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Look at the booger guys. I walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. <laughs> I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Ah, oh. uh, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? Mm. No. Uh -huh. Please, will you join me for tea? Yes. Fellow Damien to his sitting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. It's pretty cool. Damien smiles to himself. What? It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to the marijuana that they sm no, <laughs> refers to both the latter time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the table on which they served it. Hmm, interesting. Oh, my dear friend, we are currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Uh, your home is really impressive. Are there a lot of goths in Maple Bay? I like your cake. Your home is really impressive. It seems like you've really put a lot of work into this place. Huh. The thank you. Huh. No one's ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> kind of am. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? How delightful. Well, <laughs> How delightful. Well, when I was a young boy, my father, <clears throat> did he take you into the city huh. <laughs> to see a marching band? Sorry. <laughs> did you guys see a marching band? Uh. I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious. Hmm. Of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? Uh. I'd love to see a marching band. <laughs> hmm. So awesome. Nevertheless, I've always had a lot, had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Ah. I like not dying when I catch a cold. <laughs> he takes a sip of tea. Ah. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals without being adamantly horrid. Uh. That's wordy. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Uh. Tell me, Wolf, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do. But I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Mm. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the... Th things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Oh. Please do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound, sophisticated. Hmm. I like watching soap making videos on the internet. Love me some word jumbles. I learned how to juggle once. Oh, uh, 
well, that sounds like something I'd actually do. Soap is uh, an important advancement in modern society. Getting rid of germs and stuff. I would say that the people who make soap are the true heroes here? To watch them work is an honor. Ah. I um, tried making some with Amanda once, and we both had to go to the doctor for the rashes. <laughs> Which I guess goes to show that we should leave it to the professionals. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh! Come, I have one more thing to show you. Damien- Oh, that's cool. Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. Oh. My garden. It's beautiful. Hmm. Thank you. Ah. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. Ah. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Huh. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied about the bouquet affected the message. Mm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off a of vine. Uh. Lilium bulbiferium, the orange lily. What do you think this one means? Uh, my loins are ablaze. Thou art the tightest. <laughs> Three cheers for sweet revenge. Mm. Three cheers for sweet revenge? He uh. liked it. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Really? Well, uh. and that's... Uh, precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Uh, snapdragons. Because they're cute, and you can do that thing where you squeeze them so it looks like they're talking. <laughs> what a lovely choice. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. Oh, oh nobody's ever gotten me flowers before, Damien. <laughs> Stop it. You would put together a bouquet for me. Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. It's like one mind. It's like one mind, me and my character. This is ridiculous. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Wolf, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls his cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. Hmm. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air with a lovely... What a lovely yard. Nailed it. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into the garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Nice. Oh, hey. A gargoyle. Oh, no. I knocked over the gargoyle. <laughs> Shit. Fix that guard. Fix that guard. Oh, no. Oh. Womp. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. Is that a head? What is happening here? Yeah. yeah, buddy! Oh, I'm good at this. Does that will have breasts? Oh, I must hurry. I must hurry. He is going to come back. No. That? No! Just... Oh, no. Am I doing this wrong? Come on, 20 seconds. Get on there! Get on there, you filthy gargoyle! Oh! Oh, no! Oh, thank God. Get, get, get... Oh! Yes! was terrifying. Okay, we did it. We got the gargoyle back together. Phew, that was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ah! Wolf, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. Oh, okay. No problem, dude. Everything's all right. Uh, or everything all right? Damien, worry... Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. <laughs> Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post-haste. Do you need help? Mm. Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Mm. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go! 
Um... Damien and I walk into school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. Hi, Hugo! Hmm. Hey, Damien, you're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids in Trouble rodeo. Huh. What is it this time? Hmm? This, Damien, you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear the faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of the creepy basements. We find another... Oh, what are you two up to? You look suspicious as fuck. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him and Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son, Lucian has a bloody nose. Uh-oh. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered <clears throat> around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. Ah! The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second, Lucian. Did you try to cask of Amatilado, Ernest? book reference? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him, what's, uh, what's cask of Amontillado? Well, I'm glad somebody asked. Huh. It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to the cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Oh. Hmm. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot. But then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were crackling, cackling maniacally. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes. Dad. What? It took you 20 minutes, son. We just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse. Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. Huh? It's only five pages long, and there is no movie. Haha, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. <sighs> Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. <laughs> Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. Alright, I'm filling this under what the heck. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Oh, harsh. Ernest and Lucian high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home, Mr. Blood March, you two. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Lucian, Damien, and I all pile in my car and begin the drive home. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Mm. Oh. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you and I can see that you're struggling, so if you do you decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that. Huh. Two. Maybe you can spend this week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want to your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. <laughs> I love you, son. Ah. Lucian continues staring out of the window. Love you, too. Aww. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright, and all things considered, Lucian's brick laying was pretty good. So, there's that silver lining. Ugh. 
There is that, yes. It's probably just going through a phase. I really admire how you handled that. Does that kind of thing happen a lot? I really admired how you handled that. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. See you around, Sue. Oh. It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Huh. I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo! What you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two-bed, two-bath, shabby-cheek cottage. This house does not even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular sized house? Mm -hmm. I... I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How'd afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tried to brick him up into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everybody read that story except for me? Lucian livestreamed the entire thing. Nice. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Debian guy's a character, but he's really good at company and surprisingly diplomatic dad. <laughs> I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Hmm. Date complete. All right, how we do? Uh, oh, that's a lot of numbers. That's a lot of numbers. I'm sensing a romance between God, us. We are just killing it with a these dads. Feels good, man. Romance. Feels good. Well, I think that's what we're going to well, call it for today, guys. That's a Thank band. you all so much for watching. Let me know how you felt about Lucian. Should we go out with him again? Or who should we go out with next? I would love to get your feedback on that. And we'll see what happens next time. Beardheart, like the video before you go, please. And subscribe if you're new. Love your faces. Bye.